Hey, why don't we go fishing? Come on. I'm here to do a uh, review on my new Tracker 195 Pro Team. Um, it's the TXW, it's not the Tournament Edition. And uh, I'm really doing a uh, after tournament review here. I fished the first tournament out of this boat yesterday. Uh, and I've seen one month reviews, brand new reviews, one year reviews, but I've never seen anybody do a post tournament or after tournament review, so that's what I'm gonna do here today. Tell you what I uh, liked and disliked about the boat. Uh, from a tournament standpoint, I know the first thing everybody asks is how fast is the boat. Uh, reading up and doing uh, some research on this subject, seems like everybody's getting a lot of different speeds out of this boat. Now for me, uh, yesterday with the full tournament load, after we had the live well full and three quarters of a tank of fuel, we were getting over 58 miles an hour. We may have been able to get a little bit more, but, but uh, due to the wind conditions, and it was windy, we had gust over 25 miles an hour yesterday. Uh, we were fishing on the San Jacinto River so we didn't get to big waves, but there were some areas where there were white caps out on the San Jacinto River, so it handled that really well. Um, along with all the pleasure boaters, the wake boaters and jet skis and other boat traffic out there, it handled beautiful. And uh, we also, not only did we run against the wind, but we were also running against the tide some, in some cases because the San Jacinto River is a tidal river and there is flow back and forth so uh, we were running against the current, and we were getting 58. At one time, we got 58 and a half miles an hour on the GPS. So uh, she's pretty quick. Uh, could I get more speed out of her, change crops, do that kind of thing? Yes, that's possible. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I mean, a 60 mile an hour boat, and she will run 60. I've had her up to, and over 60 by myself in the boat. It's pretty quick, especially for a 18-foot boat or 18-foot, seven-inch boat. Uh, that's pretty fast. So I tell you what, why don't we get in the boat, and I'll show you a few things that uh, I like and dislike about the boat, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, that reminds me. No, this isn't the boat uh, issue with the boat, and no, this isn't the issue with how it fished tournament. But this little step here is, I'm not gonna call it useless, but it can be dangerous. This is a wide boat. It's almost as wide as a trailer Yes. So you're actually stepping up underneath the boat when you step on that. It's not a big issue when you're getting in the boat, but man, is it tough to find when you're getting out of the boat. And a guy my age, and I, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, in their late 50s, and 60 still tournament fishing and you do use the step to get in and out of the boat this is the one you use most the one in front of the tire not the one in back of the tire just a recommendation to tracker add 12 inches to this make it a little more safer for guys like me to get in and out of the boat with that said let me get in Well, I have to say one of the things that I absolutely love about this boat is the size of the front deck and the storage space. And, uh, well, while I'm here, the carpet's dirty. I'm sorry. Uh, it really does need a good steam cleaning. Uh, i got some stains on it and everything. I've been fishing it uh, since March, 
and uh, yeah she needs a the carpets need a good cleaning uh, but the deck space is huge for an 18 foot boat I did a lot of research and I did a lot of comparisons between this boat and other 18 to 19 foot boats on the market and uh, you don't really find a pure 19 foot boat uh, well you don't find a pure 18 foot boat either uh, this boat is 18 feet 7 inches long uh, in length uh, but it's incredible 96 inches wide this thing is huge in the back it's got an incredible amount of deck space up here for a boat in that class in fact it's got the most deck space uh, with the exception of the nitro the nitro pretty much matches it um, was it the nitro 19 foot or z19 uh, or z18 which whichever nitro it is that's uh, in this class i looked at skeeters i looked at rangers i looked at aluminum boats and i looked at fiberglass boats this boat has the most deck space and the most storage space of any boat in that class so that was one of the huge reasons I bought this boat. However, there is a little bit of issue with the uh, storage. If I come down here and open this hatch, it has a uh, open uh, assist on it. And I don't know if you can see it, but that's has this open assist on it awesome works great I I don't have to when I'm in a tournament and I need to get in this hatch I pull it up and it goes in place saves time and uh, I don't have to worry about it flopping over and flexing the hinge out of place and that's a big issue if you have uh, a hatch without an assist on it so that comes into the problem because this front hatch does not have an assist on it. it it'll just flop back cost time uh, sure it's only a few seconds but how many times do I need to get in this hatch and get uh, tackle in fact the tackle is in a state of a disarray because of the tournament yesterday uh, so that's not very costly tracker put a open assist on this hatch too I'll probably add one to this boat here shortly a lot of folks have complaints about the cooler this is this is where the cooler is and the biggest complaint about the cooler is it doesn't hold ice well uh, I haven't had a whole lot of complaint it don't have any ice in it now uh, yesterday was a cool day so we had plenty of ice left over afterwards uh, we had um, and believe me you need ice when you're fishing in a tournament you need to you need water you need Gatorade uh, and in some cases you need a, a pep with a, a coke or something uh, so yes it was a kind of cool day we did have uh, uh, fished a couple days in the 90s so far this year and it held ice the duration of the time that we were fishing kept the drinks cold uh, so right now I don't have any major complaints about this uh, cooler here uh, but some folks want it want it to hold ice for several days uh, I don't see a reason to hold ice for several days but if that's what you want uh, this cooler is not going to hold ice for several days, but it will keep your drinks cold for at least 12 hours So I call that okay Now one of the things uh, that come with this boat uh, that I think are, is kind of worthless is the rod tie downs that come with the boat and I don't have them on here because I've changed them out I went with the rod buckles, changed them out, 
I can put six rods on this side and six rods on this side if I need to because of these rod buckles where that little bungee cord thing that came on the boat on both sides you make a four rods in there were they secure kind of sorta I really didn't like them uh, the uh, they stuck up where they uh, got in the way when uh, when you weren't using them uh, really a, a trip hazard if you ask me so uh, hey I don't need a trip hazard on the boat so I really didn't like the uh, uh, rod tie downs that came with this boat Okay, let's talk trolling motor. A Minn Kota 55 pound thrust 12 volt trolling motor comes stock on the TXW. Uh, they, they have a 70 pound Minn Kota that they put on the tournament edition that's 24 volts, but um, that doesn't come stock on the TXW. And let me tell you, a 55 pound thrust trolling motor is not enough for this size boat. It, I mean, you had to move the boat a little bit. You get a little windy like we had yesterday in the tournament, and that 12 volt, 55 pound thrust trolling motor just doesn't cut it. Uh, I kind of recommend that Tracker just goes, goes ahead and on this boat, on the 195s, just go ahead and put the 24 volt, 70 pound thrust on all of them. Uh, I'm sure folks and a lot of folks I know that have the, the standard TXW has already upgraded them. So they're ready to spend that money, the, the added cost. So why don't you guys go ahead and just put the 70 pound thrust on it. I happen to have had this motor guide 80 pound thrust uh, trolling motor uh, that I'd bought new less than a year ago for Father's Day. So I kept it uh, when I sold the old boat. And that's the reason it's got a motor guide on it and not a Minn Kota. It's not that I like motor guide more. Uh, I found their motor guide and Minn Kota are fairly equal along that line. So, uh, 80 pounds works well. Uh, the only mistake is it's a 45 inch shaft. This boat needs at least 50 inch shaft uh, to be comfortable. Uh, so. And I think the, uh, the one that comes stock on this is a 45 inch shaft. So uh, the shaft length of the trolling motor needs to be longer than the stock on this boat. It's just not enough length. Uh, you get it a little wave and your trolling motor is constantly coming out of the water. Rod storage boat has more rod storage than you'd ever need. You have two of these. Each one of these will hold 12 rods. There's one on the other side too. Great rod storage. However, it wouldn't be a bad idea to also add one of those lift assists for this. I don't know how exactly you'd install it. If you'd install it in the back here where it's the, the widest because it is a angled lid. Um, it would, uh, back here it'd get in the way. You may be able to find a short one and install it up on the front, but a lift assist on the rod box would be uh, great. And like I said, there's a, another one just on the other side of the boat just like this one. And uh, So yeah, the storage space, this thing has so much freaking storage space, it's unbelievable. Now this boat is a, a 2019, I bought new in uh, March of 2020, so I got a good deal because Tracker had her on um, clearance, uh, and we'll talk price in a little bit, uh, but one of the things I liked about the 2019, uh, and of course the 2020s, because initially I would planned on buying the tournament edition uh, of this boat, a 2020 tournament edition, but uh, Due to that uh, being on clearance and everything, it uh, this is the boat I ended up uh, choosing. 
And one of the great things about the 2019s and the 2020s is the seats. These are awesome seats. Uh, I had looked at the uh, a 2018 and I just did not like the seats. And I especially didn't like the center uh, seat here. Uh, when you're tournament fishing, uh, especially the guy in the back, he needs to get down here and maybe get the net uh, to net your fish for you or something. He needs something solid to stand on. And with this boat configuration, he, he has a solid place to stand on. And, and this has a lid and, and there's some storage space under here too. Uh, but when you take your grandkid out like I did uh, the other day or uh, uh, you have three people what you have that comes on this boat is this pad and this pad uh, really it clips on here real quick I mean so it's you don't have to worry about you now I got it bass backwards here trying to hurry in the video never do it do it completely right in the video but I mean it clips on here uh, quickly and, and it's evidently comfortable is what my uh, granddaughter thinks she just loves this uh, she loves that she's got these handles she can hold on to here so uh, for a kid this is great and I take uh, the grandkids out quite a bit, so uh, I really like this center seat, especially since that's got a pad on it. Okay, let's talk live wells. I love that these live wells have two lids. A lot of the boats uh, you'll find they don't have two lids. They just have one big lid. Uh, how many of you had bass jump out of the live well when you open the lid up? And if you got a big lid, that makes it even more. I mean, and, and it's divided. I've got the divider out of it right now because I fish mainly team tournaments, so I don't have to separate my fish uh, with my co-butter. But if I fish a tournament where I'm gonna have a co-butter and not a teammate, then I can slide that uh, live well divider in there and we can keep our fish separate. Uh, so that's great. The live well comes with lights awesome that it has lights uh, now these V-T2 vents are not stock uh, I endorse these from uh, they're from uh, new pro products greatest invention ever for 50 bucks you can add these to your live well and it will help get those bad gases that build up in the live well out and then move fresh clean air in there to keep the water cooler and add oxygen to your live well. I mean it's no good to have a recirculate pump uh, and recirculate uh, if you're not getting good air back down in that live well. So uh, I really think these VT2s should come standard on all bass boats said they're fifty dollars quick installation uh, I don't see why not so you can ask if you buy this boat to get some of these installed I'm sure they'll install them for you the live well has a good pump it would be nice if it had dual intake pumps um, it would fill up quicker but it did well yesterday uh, it filled up, uh, the recirculate pump worked great, and it also has, and I don't know if you can say, but it has a pump out where you can pull uh, the one, uh, the recirculate, and it'll actually pump out. So it's got a pump out function. So the, the live wells is good uh, as any live well on uh, $80,000 boats. I'm sure a lot of those have, you know, oxygen and all kinds of stuff on them, but uh, that oxygen, if you put these VT2s in, you don't need that oxygen pump on it. Uh, that 
very costly oxygen pump. Like I said, these VT2s are just 50 bucks. Back hatch. The back hatch also has an assist on it. You don't have to get into this too much during the uh, tournament, or you better hope you don't have to get into this during the tournament. There's plenty of room in here for three batteries, and if it's organized right, you may be able to get a uh, fourth battery in here if you want to go to a 36 volt drone motor. Uh, the charging onboard charging system uh, for mine, I went like I said, I had it upgraded to 24 volts. They put the third battery in it, and the uh, three bank charger I selected was too big actually to go in there. So they installed it back here. Uh, there's plenty of room for it, uh, which left more storage space under the, uh, the little center seat. But this is well organized, uh, and like I said, it has the uh, open assist on it so that's great holds it open okay let's talk motor uh, you got to have a good motor on your boat it's no doesn't do you any good to have all this night nice boat uh, with all the storage and everything if you don't have a good motor and to tell you the truth I was never a mercury fan when I was doing my uh, boat comparisons, uh, if the boat had a Yamaha on it, I gave it higher marks than the ones with the Mercury's on it. And I'm going to tell you this right now, so far I have to say I was wrong. This Mercury 154 stroke is a killer motor. It's got a great hole shot. It's quiet. It's smooth. It starts wonderfully. So I'm going to give, I'd give three thumbs up if I had three thumbs. I guess I could take my foot, uh, shoe off and uh, use my big toe. But uh, yeah, the Mercury 154 stroke. Now this isn't the Pro uh, XS. I understand it'll turn more RPMs than the standard. But hey, like I said earlier, I'm getting 60 miles an hour out of this boat for a... Uh, 18 foot boat, 18 foot, seven inch boat. 60 miles an hour is pretty doggone fast. So I'm pleased with that. Very pleased. Okay, let's talk console. If you get the tournament edition, you get a fancy steering wheel. Fancy steering wheels don't help you perform. Yeah, they look great. I don't see anything wrong with this steering wheel. It's Good steering wheel. It's tilt. Uh, and speaking of steering, I should have said something when I was talking to motor. It does. This boat does come standard with uh, hydraulic steering. That is awesome. It makes it a whole lot easier to steer your boat. Uh, and uh, have no complaints. I have no complaints at all about the instrument cluster. They're well placed. Sure, they're not digital. Uh, I mean, digital uh, instrument clusters are pretty good. Uh, I've had some, uh, but they have a, a whole lot more higher failure rate than the uh, old analog ones. So yes, this is uh, well laid out. Uh, it would be nice if it wasn't uh, plastic, if it was uh, fiberglass, but uh, so far, I have no actual complaints. It's a, it's a good looking uh, console. The switches are in good places. There's a 12 volt outlet if you need to charge your phone or something. There's a place here to, to actually put your phone uh, if you want to do that. Now, yeah, if I can get a hold of it, your phone actually sits there securely. You don't have to worry about it. So that's a nice little add-on. Now I did add a switch here for my deck lights. I don't know if y'all noticed the uh, or, or seen the videos of me installing deck lights, but um, 
I did install the deck lights. I used the VersaTrack and actually installed most of them inside the VersaTrack. So that was nice. Let's talk sonar units. The This boat comes with one 5 inch Lowrance uh, hook tube. It's a split shot. Uh, I was running 7 inch Lowrances on my uh, old boat. I was running the Elite Sevens and wanted something bigger at the console. So I've got a nine inch triple shot. Uh, the uh, So far I like it. Uh, I haven't uh, used the, uh, or got used to using the side scan uh, too much yet. Uh, so I need to still play with that, but uh, so far that's great. But I do recommend that Tracker put at least 7 inch units on here. They don't have to put two 7 inch units on uh, the standard TXW. Uh, the Tournament Edition has two 5 inches. And let me tell you, I moved the 5 inch, I think maybe you can see it. I moved the 5 inch that was here, had them put it up front. And that thing's about useless up front. If I'm standing up fishing, I can't see anything on it. I, I actually have to take a knee to actually be able to see something on it. So uh, I recommend Tracker step up one size in uh, their Lowrance units that they put on these boats. Put a 7 inch here at the console on the TXW and on the tournament edition, put two 7 inches on it. Uh, again, uh, I believe most guys are going to be willing to pay that little added cost and it isn't that much. I should have gone ahead and had them put a another 9 inch up front and, and been done with it when I bought the boat and didn't do it. Now one of the other things uh, I added, had them add on is this hot foot. Uh, a lot of folks say that uh, there's not enough room in these boats for a hot foot. I guess if I was 6'2 or 6 foot or, or above, that may be true. But at 5'6, and by the way, the average height of uh, uh, guys in the U.S. is 5'6, five, 5'8, five, and, and there's plenty of room for us. In fact, uh, I'm thinking uh, I should have had them put the slide rail for uh, the hot foot in there. I'm probably going to end up putting the slide rail in myself. Uh, because this thing could come back a, another inch. Uh, so that it's easier for me to get to uh, full throttle. But don't let them tell you, especially if you're a, a, a shorter guy like me, that you can't put a hot foot in here, because there it is. It's in this boat. And, that, and if they can put it in the standard TXW, they can put it in a... Uh, tournament edition too and I know I'm not the only guys that guy that has a hot foot put in there I'm just letting you telling you about it a lot of us guys tournament guys that um, fish either have a teammate or fish in tournaments where you're gonna have a co-boater uh, this is your co-boater or teammates rod storage it'll hold six rods uh, I know my teammate likes it. It's a big improvement over what I had on the other boat. Uh, and it does have a tie down. And by the way, this is the same tie down I was talking about up on the deck. Uh, they come stock on it. And for this application here, this type of tie down works well. So there's no complaints with it here. But let me tell you, if it was up on the deck, you can get, I mean, it doesn't take much to get your foot under that trip. Uh, the hook eye here sticks up. This end sticks up. It's just, they just don't work well on the front deck. Uh, but in this situation, it, it, it does, it works great. Uh, the rods are in there securely. You can put the butt of the rod in this hole we here. It stays in the hole. Um, 
if your co-boat has more than six rods like i said there's plenty of rod storage um i got plenty of room in here for uh, if my uh teammate or a co-boater wanted uh, to bring eight rods we can put a few of them in uh the rod storage up on the front deck so like this really do like this one more thing that i really don't like and that's these cleats they put on here they stick up too high i don't know how many times i've actually got my finger up underneath this uh, and hey it hurts in fact i got a bruise there uh, from this very exact cleat so i hate these cleats i really do um, are they functional yes uh, they are functional but there's got to be better cleats i know uh, that you don't have to stick up this high uh, in fact these are coming off i will be taking these off and i will be putting some fold down cleats on it i can they're not that costly add another hundred dollars or so to the boat cost and put the fold down uh, cleats on this boat and people are going to be that, that much happier I know this is supposed to be a uh, an economy type boat uh, but it doesn't cost that much to put a few odd and end things that I've uh, said on the boat and I think people will be happy So there you have it folks, um, most of my likes and dislikes about this boat, uh, I know a lot of folks see this boat as a entry level bass boat, uh, no I don't call it an entry level bass boat, it's a 60 mile an hour bass boat that has a huge front deck, it's got a big back deck, it's got ample storage for tournament guys to fish in. So this isn't an entry level bass boat. Maybe a 175 or a 190 pro team uh, is an entry level bass boat. This is not an entry level bass boat. Um, I know also that you hear a lot of complaints or a lot of folks look at tracker boats as not being quality. I have no complaints. I don't see anything that's uh, in this boat that is uh, what I would consider poor quality. Uh, it's an all welded aluminum hull and it is, I mean, uh, it's great. Sure, uh, there's been some folks that have welds break. Well, let me tell you, if you look, do your research, the welds on the Ranger aluminum bass boat break too. There are problems with all boats maybe some of the uh, folks that bought trackers that had issues maybe that boat was built on a Friday kind of like uh, the uh, car industry says uh, you don't buy a, a car that was built on a Friday or a truck that came off the assembly line on a Friday uh, I don't know if it's true or not but uh, it may be the case uh, we're humans humans built this boat and humans do make mistakes from time to time. If, tra if tracker warranty covers the mistakes, we really don't have a lot of complaints. So right now, other than a few minor things um, that I've already taken care of or I'm gonna take care of, uh, I really don't have any complaints about this boat. I love this boat. Uh, it fished very good yesterday in the tournament. It handled the wind. Yes, it's fast. Um, I call a six mile an hour boat is a fast boat. Uh, there were speed boats that don't run 60 miles an hour. So, um, bottom line is, I'm gonna give this boat a, a huge recommendation. And if you folks are out there looking for a new boat, uh, because it is the best value in a bass boat. And like I said, it's not an entry-level bass boat. It's a, this is the real deal, folks. And I did. I compared them. I looked at Skeeter. I looked at Ranger. I looked at a host of other uh, bass boat brands. 
and this is the one I picked. Uh, I got more bang for my buck out of this boat than I did out of any, any of the others. And, and when I was talking about electronics, there's a lot of bass boats out there that don't come with any electronics. Uh, the Skeeter I looked at uh, had two five-inch units that came on it. Same problem as the tournament edition here. So there's issues with all the boats. I went with the huge deck and the huge storage were the number one thing I was looking for because I do take the grandkids out. I needed the deck space. I needed the storage space. Uh, but I was also looking at cost and hey, yeah, I got a good deal because this, this was a 2019 that I bought in March of 2020 and, and uh, tracker headed on clearance. Uh, in fact, I was able to do the upgrades to this that I wanted done and still come in under the uh, tournament, uh, 2020 tournament edition cost. So, but uh, you can make your decision. You can go look at uh, the, the standard TXW, it's a good boat. Uh, or you can go with the tournament edition. I recommend uh, either one of them. So until next time, tight lines and hey, take a kid fishing, bye.